It's a beautiful night for baseball. And live from Marlins Park in Miami, Sportsnet LA presents the Los Angeles Dodgers and the Miami Marlins in game two of this three game series. Hi again, everybody. Charlie Steiner, Joe Davis, Otta Simon, along with Oral Hershiser and Nomar Garcia Parr. Good news and bad news from last night. The bad news is the Dodgers fell four to one. The good news is that Clayton Kershaw pitched solid. At least he threw 66 pitches, came out of the game none the worse for wear, ready to go on Wednesday against the Yankees in hopes, of course, he'll be pitching into the postseason. But a lot's going to have to happen between now and then. There is. There's big picture stories on this team. I think the biggest picture is there four games ahead of the Giants. The Giants won last night. That closes the gap a little bit. There's a lot of underlying story. Clayton Kershaw, Andre Ethier being back. Rich Hill on the mound doing really well. Kind of a duo back there. Back to back punches with those guys. And then you think about the two kids pitching in New York against the Yankees. DeLeon Urias. You think about the bullpen usage. So many different topics. But the main topic needs to be beat the Marlins and do the things that are right in front of you tonight. Kershaw by the way scheduled pitch Wednesday in New York. Now to Rich Hill. What a fabulous story he has been a career 37 game winner but now he's one of the best pitchers in the game. Well when you look for the Dodgers in his first two starts all he's done he's pitched 12 innings only allowed six hits and zero earned runs. This is exactly what the Dodgers needed especially when Clayton Kershaw went down. So now that he's back he is that one two punch with that incredible breaking ball and going into today's game you look at he's been unbeaten in his last 10 starts so Dodgers are hoping he can continue that streak. Andre Ethier is back he's been activated for tonight's game we're going to take a break when we come back a lot of Rizzo returns with Andre Ethier. Dre is back.
and one. seven at yeah. home, 15 on the road. This is game two of a 10 game road trip. It is their longest road trip of the season. They begin tonight, as Oral mentioned, four games in front of the Giants, who are at Arizona. That game will be getting underway in about an hour. Johnny Cueto and Archie Bradley are the pitchers there. The Dodgers are getting ready. You see Yasiel Puig in the middle of your screen. He is starting tonight in left field. And here is the lineup put together by manager Dave Roberts. Howie Kendrick leading off at second base. Got Corey Seager at shortstop. Turner and Gonzalez and Grandal through the middle of the lineup. Josh Reddick, who has been red hot in right field. Yasiel Puig in left field. Jock Peterson in center. Rich Hill is pitching and batting ninth. So the Dodgers at 79 and 61, losing last night, seeing their five game winning streak come to an end. Tom Kohler, the Bronx born right hander, leading the Marlins out onto the field. The Marlins feeling pretty good about themselves while a game under 500 and still five games out of the final wild card spot. They have been playing much better baseball of late, talking with Don Mattingly and Tim Wallach before the game. They still think they've got a legitimate shot and they say that Kohler in the second half of the season despite what we saw out of Fernandez last night has been their best pitcher. Yeah they said they look over that last month he really has changed his mechanics changed his mental approach to the game as well. They said early in his career he was always just kind of a thrower on the hill. He's got a decent fastball in the low to mid 90s and he's got a really good breaking ball they said but it was just all a matter he relied on his stuff and now he's attacking the strike zone throwing more strikes with that fastball and then utilizing that curveball for the put away pitch. He's done really well against the NL West this year. He's 4 and 0 oh with a 1.5 ERA. I think when the Dodgers get to two strike counts, if Kohler gets ahead of them, they can look soft. About 70% of his pitches, once he gets two strikes, are his off speed stuff the change up and the slider. The other thing he's doing a little differently is with left handers throwing more change ups. Left handers, beginning of this year, before the mechanical change, were really dominating them. Now, in the last few starts, they're only hitting 200 off of him. Our closed captioning tonight is presented by Wiener Schnitzel. Well, there's Puig and Kenta Maeda, just good friends. It's going to be Kendrick, Seeger, and Turner to hit here in the first inning. So here come the Dodgers after tonight. Of course, they finish it up here in Miami. Then it's on to New York for three. The Yankees are hot and they have just beaten the Tampa Bay Rays five to one. So that's just not a a little vacation into New York this coming week and then this time next weekend the Dodgers and the Diamondbacks will be in Phoenix. Kendrick a 308 lifetime hitter against the Marlins. Starting at second base tonight. Utley with the night off. Seeger and Turner to follow and away we go. Tom Kohler is 29th start of the year, 9 and 10, 387 delivers a strike, and it's nothing in one. Well, we have the roof closed. It is hot and humid in Miami. What else would you expect this time of year? And Kendrick lost one to right, and there's Ozuna to make the catch, which is a perfect time to introduce. The Marlins defense brought to you by Clamato. And over there at first base is Xavier Scruggs. The Marlins have had some injuries. One particular to Justin Bohr, who would play a majority of the time at first base. But since he went down, the Marlins have used six different first basemen over the course of this season. Xavier Scruggs playing his 17th game this year for the Marlins. He's had a couple of stints with the St. Louis Cardinals the last couple of years. The Marlins defensively, a solid club this year, ranking fourth in the National League. Seeger takes a strike, and it's nothing at one. Corey Seeger's a third leading hitter in the league with that 318 average. And he's second in the league with 172 base hits, and he has been red hot lately. One ball, one strike, one out. We are just underway. So the Dodgers have to figure out a way to beat the Marlins. Miami has won all five meetings this year, and the Dodgers scored a total of nine runs against Miami pitching and collectively hitting 188. Seeger takes outside. He 
interesting note about Corey Seager. He's got 24 home runs and 39 doubles. The last rookie with 25 home runs and 40 doubles, Albert Pujols, back in 2001. So he's closing in on some pretty good company. There's only been a couple of shortstops in the history of the game that have had 25 or more home runs and 50 doubles, which he only needs 11 more of, and that's Alex Rodriguez and Miguel Tejada. Two balls and two strikes to Seager. There's an asterisk next to those two names I just mentioned because they both were caught with PEDs during that time. So Corey could be the first clean one to ever do it. Well, if he's not rookie of the year, who is? I haven't even looked. <laughs> and there's another base hit. Seeger right on cue with his 173rd base hit. A one out single to right. This is what the Dodger fans have come accustomed to hitting breaking balls pulling those hitting fastballs going the other way swinging early in the count he just does it all. Seager is now tied with Daniel Murphy of the Nationals for most hits in the league 173 of them. And since the 10th of June. Turner has been just lights out. And a strike, nothing in one. Having his best year of his career. 25 home runs, 78 runs batted in. We're talking about his uh, defense last night. It's just getting better and better. 0 and 1, Seeger leading off first. Corey not likely to steal. He's got one. He's been caught three times. Kohler, over the course of his career, had good success against the Dodgers. But this is outside. One and one. So the Dodgers have their four game cushion on the Giants. And there's a sense of urgency to the Marlins every game they play from now till the end of the season. They still think they've got a pretty good shot. Long shot. But they feel good about themselves. Mattingly was saying today this young team has been learning some valuable lessons about losing some of their key players. And certainly Stanton has been down. As you mentioned. Uh, Justin Bohr down. But they're they're hanging tough. The Pirates seem to be heading south. But Jolly Roger is kind of flying at half staff. One and two to Turner. Well, I know Don Manley talking about some injuries to his club but I know he's not going to get any sympathy from Dodger fans when you look at they've had 28 different players on their DL so and they've still managed to have come in and here with a four game lead in their division. That's incomprehensible it's 28. You got 28 guys on the DL and you got a 25 man roster. Uh, they've come a long way this year and through a lot of rough waters. Dave Roberts has to be in the top one or two for manager of the year. Joe Madden will probably get a lot of sentimental votes with what the Cubs are doing. Or what these Dodgers are doing out here now catching the Giants and being up by four. It's going to be a double play and that's going to do it. A broken bat and the Dodgers are down. Meanwhile, Rich Hill getting ready for his third start for the Dodgers.
line up together for the Marlins tonight, beginning with D. Gordon. And Xavier Scruggs, who Nomar was talking about just a moment ago at first base in his 18th big league game. Prado and Yelich and Ozuna through the middle of the lineup. Frenchie, Jeff Francoeur in left field. Jeff Mathis behind the plate. Real Muto the night off tonight. Echeverria at shortstop. Tom Kohler pitching and batting ninth. He is 36. He is a 37 game winner in that last line. Not many pitchers have pitched better than he has second half of the year. It's remarkable what he's done at age 36. 2009, the shoulder surgery. 2014, Tommy John surgery. Rich Hill reinvented himself and rededicated himself. A lot of guys run out of passion and gas, but not this guy on the mound. He studied pitching. Had a nice conversation with a guy helping him out in AAA when he was in Boston named Brian Bannister, ex big league pitcher, that said, you know what? Let's start to study what your best pitch is. And let me tell you, Clayton Kershaw didn't throw his fastball at the time. He throws a lot of sliders now. Zach Greinke doesn't throw a lot of fastball all the time. Now he throws a lot of changeups. You know why? Because those are his best pitch, and your best pitch is your curveball. So he pitches mostly with his curveball out there, and it has been very successful for him. Now they get two to Gordon. And there's Howie Kendrick at second base tonight. Take a look at the Clamato defense brought to you by Clamato. And out there in left field. Yasiel Pui. Now you don't hear that too often because we expect him in right, and it's only his second career start out there in left field. But I guarantee you, if you ask him, it doesn't matter as long as he's playing. Just like if you ask anybody in this Dodger lineup, as long as I'm out there, we're focused on one thing, and that is winning ball games. And here's Xavier Scruggs stepping in. Again, Scruggs, his 18th game, has 13 hits and 49 at bats. A local product from Whittier. Again, the uh, Marlins decimated by injuries. Justin Bohr, their big power hitting first baseman, it is out. And Scruggs getting the start tonight. He takes it high and inside, one ball and no strikes. Martin Prado on deck. So Rich Hill, a couple of years ago, was pitching for the Long Island Ducks. And here he is. And it, Oral, you and I were talking about it. Long before the game, the journey he has taken, and here he is. He's a 37 game winner at the age of 36. And 13 or so of those wins have come in the last two years, so he didn't have a lot of success prior to this. 2007 would probably be his best year if you go back that far. 32 starts with the Chicago Cubs, 11 and 8. But you're looking at a guy still with an ERA under two in the last year and a half or so. But as a career, his ERA is still over four. Eight. Two and two to Scruggs. It's a fascinating story from the X's and O's. How does one reinvent himself at a relatively late stage and late age of one's career? Well, he really started to believe that all of his pitches put into a new combination. Gets him with the breaking ball. And that's the key pitch for him. He really is a traditional backwards pitcher. And what you mean by that is he uses this curveball to get people out, but he uses it early in the count, and that kind of sets up his fastball. And so his high fastball is better because of his curveball. His low fastball is better because of his curveball and his changeup. And he lives with those pitches now. Instead of using them as predominantly out pitches, he pitches with them. Ask a scout about a pitcher's stuff and let's say fastball curveball slide in the case of Hill curveball fastball and also if you're thinking of your, as a hitter you're scouting it's like well if I see the curveball enough I'll be able to make adjustments to that and figure out how I'm going to make contact and hit it but he also changes the shape he talked about that cha changing the shape of his breaking ball as well so it's not always the same type of breaking ball you're getting from him. there's a fastball through the heart of the plate. And one of the nuances that he picked up with Rick Honeycutt watching on is the fact that he needed to get stronger in his lower half so that he could change speeds on all the different pitches by using his lower half, how much he would drive it or not drive it. Side winding. Prado flies to right. A one, two, three inning for Hill. We'll go to the set.
begin the second inning. We are scoreless. It'll be Adrian Gonzalez, Yasmani Grandal, and Josh Reddick to hit against Tom Kohler, born in the Bronx, grew up in New Rochelle, and played his college ball at Stony Brook. So he is a New Yorker through and through. Adrian Gonzalez stepping in at 292 with 17 home runs and 78 runs batted in. And Kohler is a felon. Maybe not to the degree of Rich Hill, who's kind of reinvented himself this year. Last five weeks, Gonzalez has been right on the money. So what is Kohler doing differently now than well, what he had been? A lot of people in the Marlins say he's now become a pitcher. They always said he was just a thrower out there. And being a thrower, he would oftentimes get behind in the count, would throw a lot of balls, and then he would rely on his curveball so much that we were talking about how you can hitters would eventually make adjustments. They'd make adjustments to it. And then they would find themselves in hitters' counts. Well, now he's getting ahead of the hitters. He's getting ahead of them with their fastball. He's throwing it for more strikes. He's not as wild. And then he's utilizing that curveball as a put away rather than having to rely on it to get hitters out. He's looking at it to put them away. Two and two, Gonzalez begins the second. Into right field and deep. And off the base of the wall, there's going to be a play at second base. And so instead, Gonzalez wisely retreats at first. Well, that was some play by Marcel Ozuna, the perfect carom and a great throw. Well, Adrian does a good job to get the barrel to the high fastball. We've seen Adrian do that twice in the last couple of weeks, but he squared this up perfectly, and you see the way he played it out there in right field, Ozuna. And Adrian recognizing that, say, wait a minute, I'm the leadoff. I'm the lead. I got on base. I don't need to run into an out right now. Ozuna playing in right field, what with the injury to uh, Giancarlo Stanton. Ozuna had been spending most of his time in center. Slicing down the left field line and foul. And Ozuna out there in right field is projecting then Stanton when he gets healthy enough will probably play left field so they can take some stress off his legs as he comes back right now just relegated to pinch hitting as he continues to heal. And so with Stanton out the veteran Frank Coor in left. Yelich, who had been in left has moved over to center for the time being and Ozuna's in right. Because Bonnie Grandal, his 25th home run of the season last night, takes a high breaking ball for a strike and is nothing in two. Reddick on deck. Grandal leads all major league catchers in home runs and walks. He's had a great second half. First 48 in the last 61. A tale of two seasons. Tell you what, he's been outstanding with two strikes like he has now, too. His last 28 hits, 20 have been extra bases in a two strike count. So he doesn't lose his power once you get ahead of him. One around. For Kohler, his first strike out of the game. And that'll bring up Josh Reddick. And Reddick has had quite the turnaround. Riding the seven game hitting streak. He had 12 hits in his first 24 games with the Dodgers. He has had 12 hits in his last six games. He's 12 for his last 20. That's 600 after a 145 beginning. Two balls and no strikes. When you look at the numbers that he's been putting up, swinging a hot bat with a righty on the mound, and also Yasiel Puig swinging the bat well as 
you know Dave Roberts we talked to him about going into this series and I'm chuckling a little bit that he has a it's a challenge for him to try to find playing time because he has quite a few outfielders who are swinging the bat well and deserve playing time. As they say those are difficulties that managers oh, love. To yeah have. he's not complaining one bit. And Andre Ethier activated today. Wouldn't be surprised to see him pinch hit tonight and start tomorrow. Three and out to Reddick. Three and one. Talk to us a little bit, Domar, about the difficulty of being traded, especially from one league to another, meeting a whole new collection of people that you have to play, work, and live with, and what Reddick might have been going through. And home plate umpire Tony Randazzo got it. Last night, Brian Knight, who was hit, he's not even in uniform tonight. Hmm. Got the bat, the glove, and his mask. Brian Knight was calling balls and strikes last night. Ichiro would continue to play. Brian Knight would come out of the game, and we ended up working with three umpires. And so Chris, uh, Chris Guccione flew in. He's umpiring at third base tonight, and Randazzo in his 17th big league season from Chicago says, I'm okay, let's go. The impact of the ball was on the side of the mask, and the side of the mask seemed kind of Work his jaw over right there. You see him feeling up there at the top of the jawbone, kind of twisted his <laughs> chin. I'm just wondering if Josh Reddick was asking him, like, "Are you okay? Can you still call balls and strikes? Make sure you get it. Right. <laughs> Make sure you're going to get it right." <laughs> Do I have to swing at this one, no matter where it is? <laughs> That's like getting punched in the side of the face. Three and two with one out. Gonzalez is going. Well, there's some confidence that Dave Roberts has shown in Josh Reddick. Adrian does not have the speed to steal the base. Right hander on the mound, just going with three and two to get the runner moving. But there's confidence in Josh Reddick and the way he's seeing the ball and swinging the bat now. You wouldn't have done that two weeks ago if you were Dave Roberts. So Reddick overall since coming to the Dodgers, 233, but he was at 296 in Oakland. And same thing, fouls it off to the right with Gonzalez going. And those were two good pitches by Kohler. I mean, those were sliders that started off in the strike zone. They were breaking late, and he was able to make contact, stay alive. And look at this pitch. This one, you got two strikes. You can't take that. That started off right in the middle of the plate. Gonzalez off and running and a defensive swing. They will do it again. Ever since Kohler knew, knows that Gonzalez is going from first, you've seen back to back off speed pitches. Because as a pitcher, you're thinking, there's a double play waiting for me if I can strike this hitter out. So he's gone slider, and there was just a changeup. Why just give in with the fastball, let him make contact, and my fielders are moving around? I'm going to try and make him swing and miss. On the ninth pitch of the at bat, strike three, and out to dry is Adrian Gonzalez. He's eventually tagged out, and that ends the inning. Strike him out, throw him out. No runs, one hit, and nobody left. We go to the bottom of the second.
strike him out, throw him out. It was a nine pitch at bat that eventually would be won by Tom Calder, and Reddick would strike out. Well, here's Christian Yelich. What a season he's having at 303 with 154 hits. He's eighth in the league in base hits. And what he has done in the second half of the season, while his average has gone down some, more power. High and outside, two balls, no strikes. Yelich is ninth in the league with 87 runs batted in. The young man still got some room to gain some muscle too. You can see he's more wiry strong right now. He's going to gain some weight and some muscle in the next few years and that power is going to even come more naturally which will then make him probably a more disciplined hitter. Because he knows it's not going to take such a big swing to. Produce the doubles and triples and home runs. The Valley boy from Westlake. Things outside. Back at the beginning of. August. We had an off day where we were playing in Colorado and. Marlins are coming in to play the Rockies and Don Mattingly walked through the restaurant where we all were and was visiting and he said this guy has barely scratched the surface of his ability. Just absolutely loves having him on the team. He's a hard worker. He competes with himself. He doesn't look around his teammates or the league. He competes with himself and wants to get better every day. Don Mattingly is very confident that this guy's going to be a star for a long long time. Since the all star break. Only Nolan Arenado has more runs batted in than Yelich. Arenado 48, Yelich 42. Now the 3 2. Built like the splendid splinter. See, the average has gone down, but the run production has gone up. And the 3 2. Hill's second strikeout of the game. First out of the second. Omar, you talked about with Rich Hill, he's not only throwing fastball, curveball, change slider, but he changes angles, he changes speeds, he changes shapes. When you see his curveball, you're going, okay, as a lefty, I've seen his breaking ball, and his breaking ball kind of has more. Of almost like a closer to a 12 to 6, and then all of a sudden he drops down just slightly. And we see him even drop down even more than that on that last pitch, but now he starts creating a sweeping curveball. There's a fastball inside corner at the knees. We Marcelo saw, Zuna. We also saw in that first inning, he would also drop down a little bit on a fastball. So it's not just the curveball that he's changing the angles on, he'll try to do it with the fastball. Back to back fastballs almost qualifies as a news story. <laughs> and the other thing is the Dodgers now, including tonight, 22 games left, they've got a veteran presence in their rotation. And there is Jock Peterson with a beautiful sliding catch, robbing Ozuna. Have a look at the Morongo Casino Resort and Spa Slow Mo Cam. Well, Jock Peterson got a really good jump on this ball. I mean, it's a big outfield here in Miami, and he was playing deep because Ozuna has a lot of power. And that ball sounded like it might have gone in on Ozuna just a little bit. I mean, he didn't square it up perfectly, so Jock Peterson had to come in charging and get a good read and sacrifice the body with a fine catch. So the first five hitters have been retired by Hill, who has a visitor in Yasmani Grandal on the mound. Jock Peterson robbing Ozuna of a base hit. Jeff Francoeur has really enjoyed his time here with the Marlins. He lost one to short right, and there's Howie Kendrick and a very businesslike inning. Birch Hill will go to the third. Peterson, a tremendous catch, and he'll be batting second in the third inning.
appreciation day at Dodger Stadium culminates our big weekend salute to Vin Scully. In addition to having a chance to win prizes throughout the game, the first 50,000 fans in attendance will also receive a special commemorative edition of Dodger Insider dedicated to Vin Scully's career put together by John Weissman. It's terrific. Visit Dodgers.com slash L.A. Loves Vin. And Yasiel Puig stepping in. Puig with nine home runs, 39 runs batted in. Starting in left field tonight for just the second time in his career. And he has responded well to his trip to Oklahoma City. Echevarria gets Puig by a step. First out of the third. The fielding shortstop, no more. Yeah, Echeverria has a really good glove, a good strong arm over there at short. And you were talking about these Marlins coaches and Don Mattingly. He also says watching him every single day oftentimes gets under the radar as how good he really is out there at short. Jock Peterson stepping in. Peterson with 20 home runs and 56 runs batted in. One of four Dodgers with 20 or more home runs. Gonzalez not far behind. Adrian's got 17. Two balls, no strikes. Rich Hill on deck. Peterson with his 52 walks as a solid 342 on base percentage this year. And he's a ball away from his 53rd walk. Ah. Three and one. And there's Rich Hill. Go for four with a bat in his hands, and he's been struck out three times. There's another walk to Peterson, a one out walk here in the third. I'm sure Rich will be called on to bunt right here, even though there's one out. Well, with a career 119 batting average, I like the chances. Well, we saw Fernandez last night. He's a hitter. Well, how about that? A little butcher boy that turns into, well, yep. Ooh, a double play. Oh, he's safe at first. Oh, they're going to have another look. Even Rich Hill. Looked like he beat that out down at first. He even turned around right away. Bill Miller, the first base umpire and the crew chief, and immediately to the phone, Bob Guerin talking with John Pratt. And the reason he's turned around, because look how close Prado is at third base. That was the reason why Rich Hill brought the bat, bat back and didn't lay down the bunt. Because he recognized hey, they're crashing here. And he was. A lot of left handers and even right handers it's a lot easier to bunt the ball not with you but away from you as far as where you're where you're facing this won't take long now that should they hear sound from New no. York Bill they've already started to look at it there he is clearly safe and yeah, that's why you see all the Marlins players are like yeah we're staying out here we know it you even have Kohler and Mathis the battery getting warmed up because they're not even waiting for the call they know. <laughs> and it didn't take long to overturn it. Good hustle by Rich Hill not to give up on that seeing Prado out of the corner of your eye feeling that ball going to second keep busting it. Rescue the inning. Now that's how the replay is supposed to work. A quick request, a quick look, get it right and move on. 
best laid plans of mice and men. Well, it works when it's that obvious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's quick when they're like, all right, looks we're not even let's go. Well, it didn't take long to request it, and it didn't take long to overturn it. Kendrick lined to right in his first at bat. Scoreless with two out in the third. Pass Chris Woodward. Corey Seeger is on deck. Dodgers have scored only nine runs in their five games against the Marlins this year. Marlins have won all five, and this will end the inning. As Scruggs picks it up, Kendrick is done. We'll go to the bottom of the third and the bottom third of the Marlins lineup to face Hill. have had to deal with an unbelievable amount of injuries and he certainly uh, has done a great job despite of that fact we do have an update for you on veteran left hander Scott Casimir who was placed on the disabled list on August 23rd with a neck and back issue Dodgers telling us that he has been diagnosed with thoracic spine inflammation no timetable for his return however guys the calendar really working against him at this point I'm not sure what that means but it doesn't sound good. You know, he's been having pain in a lot of different areas from his neck to his back to his obliques and it's kind of wandering around so maybe they've traced something that he's getting some nerve irritation there in his spine and that's why it's not tracking in one place. Jeff Mathis leading it off JT real Muto with the night off tonight behind the play and a ball strike nothing in one. So meanwhile the acquisition of Rich Hill makes it. All the more important as the Dodgers navigate after tonight their final 21 games and presumably on into the postseason. Which then raises the question as we look at we can do that. Dave Roberts certainly publicly cannot nor the front office. What about McCarthy. What about Anderson. What about Casimir. You got three veterans. With 21 games remaining in the regular season. Will we see them. I'm not sure we're going to see them because the games are going to be so crucial and it's not going to be just bringing somebody along for the rest of the season other than that big fella right there. And he looked fine last night a little rust. But most important thing was he got three innings in he threw 66 pitches and he's was out there playing catch today feeling good about himself had a smile on his face. 
just a few seconds ago laughing with Dave Roberts. So I think everything is good in that department for the ace. Who is scheduled to pitch against the Yankees in the Wednesday matinee in the Bronx. And for Hill his third strikeout he has retired the first seven batters. And go along with that too is Clayton Kershaw I think was further along than any of those guys as we have a look at another curveball by Hill to get him swinging in a miss. But when you look at McCarthy we just heard about Kazmir. I think what he was diagnosed like you said it doesn't sound good. I just think I don't think time is on his side to come back. And to possibly be a factor toward the end of this season let alone going to the postseason and McCarthy and Anderson we haven't heard much report as they're progressing rather quickly so I don't know if they're even going to have time to come back and make an impact toward the end of the season and in the postseason so I think what we're seeing right now from the Dodgers is this team is this is what they're going to have to be deciding with a Danny Echevarria one ball one strike and we're going to see De Leon this week in the Bronx he's pitching on Monday Urias on Tuesday Kershaw on Wednesday and then Thursday through Sunday the Dodgers will be in Arizona. Yankees won again tonight. Echevarria now it's one ball two strikes. Now you look long term there on the pitching. I'd even look a little short term. This is a huge game tonight for the Dodgers. You got Maeda going tomorrow, day game after a night game, possible chance you get swept if you lose here. Then you got two kids leading you off against the Yankees that are playing really well. And Yankee Stadium is not the easiest place to have one of your first few starts in the big leagues in a pennant race. And right behind that, Clayton Kershaw, the last game of that series, maybe Clayton's pitch count goes up to 86 or 90, but you don't know how deep he's going to be able to go following those kids. So I think short term this is a very much a crucial game for the Dodgers. The one two now Hill off the rubber now he's back on that's your Berea is ready. There's that sweeping curveball you were talking about. He's fun to watch. He sure is. It's fun to watch guys go out there and not think about velocity but think about pitching. Got him on the breaking ball that's the fourth strikeout for Rich Hill. What I really like is one especially if you're playing behind him how he's got a great pace on the hill too. Gets that ball it's ready to throw knows already has a plan in place in his head he executes. And I also like his intensity on the hill as well. I mean knowing him personally two different one guy on the hill that intensity is so different than he's just such a gentleman off the soft spoken away from the field. Tom Kohler trying to bunt for a base hit. But Hill throws him out and he has retired the first nine Marlins hitters. Corey Seager will lead off for the Dodgers as we go to the fourth Seager at Turner at Gonzalez.
is brought to you by the Dodge Challenger. Test drive one at your local Dodge dealer today. On the site where the Orange Bowl used to sit. It's Marlins Park. It opened in 2012. The Marlins opened for business in 1993. They've had two World Series champions in 97 and then 2003. Yankees came down here after that epic series with the Red Sox and got their heads handed to them. That young staff. But it's been a long drought essentially since then. In fact, the Marlins have not had a winning record since 2009. They feel like they're finally heading in the right direction under the leadership of Don Mattingly. Meanwhile, watching Hill work through the first three innings, nine up, nine down. Eleven pitches in the first, eleven in the second, and twelve in the third. He has been, to say, efficient is an understatement. A lot of times a young team they like to attack the fastball they know with Rich Hill that they don't want to get to the curveball but Rich has been very good at using the curveball and the different arm angles to tease them early in the count and they've been they've been chasing it and hitting weekly gotten some punch outs too. So it'll be Seeger and Turner and Gonzalez to hit here in the fourth inning. Tom Kohler has done well no runs and two hits a couple of strikeouts and a walk. As we mentioned in the open, even with Jose Fernandez, you talk to the Marlins people, it is Kohler who's actually been the superior pitcher since the All Star break. After watching Fernandez strike out 14 last night with the greatest of ease, it's, that's difficult to believe. Boy, was he something. Had the slider working, he had the hard fastball. We saw him throw one at 100 miles an hour. He knew he was going up against Clayton Kershaw for part of the game and he was very competitive and locked in right from the first pitch. He was even locked in at home plate when he was batting. He nearly, <laughs> yeah, he nearly <laughs> Clayton's head off of the line drive. Seeger fouls it back. Corey with a single to right in his first at bat. And is now tied for the National League lead with 173 hits. And the Murphy of the Nationals. Having a great year, he's tied with Seeger. One ball and one strike to Corey Seeger. 24 home runs, 66 runs batted in. You know, we first were introduced to him at the major league level about this time a year ago. Jimmy Rollins the bad finger and he had he was brought up and they, hopefully we're going to bring him along slowly and gingerly that didn't work out too well he only hit about 337 in September and it was terrific in the postseason but watching him grow and mature before our eyes has really been a thrill. It's really hard to believe that. He's as young as he is and has very little experience the way he carries himself and the way he makes the in game adjustments from pitch to pitch from bat to at bat. And to think of our thoughts about him when he's struggling a little bit like when he's got an over eight working with a couple strikeouts we don't even have even a thought that oh this is going to continue. Justin Turner coming up bounced into a double play and broke his bat in his first at bat and with his new one he. Fouls it back. It's nothing in one. I think it was about a week ago, or or a couple weeks ago. He was at 0 for 13, and everybody's like 0 for 13, and we we're like, uh. remember he got? They were wondering he got hit off the hand and thinking, oh, was that what caused the 0 for 13? And then he just changed every. I think he went two for three. Got two or three hits that day. It's like, okay, everything's fine. There's yeah. no need to panic because he's not panicking. <laughs> no. It's just not in his makeup. Very slow heartbeat. And he and Chase Upley have formed a terrific tandem up the middle, and Chase like the older brother. Two and one to Turner. 
chase the night off tonight. This is a night where a sweatshirt, frankly, is not needed. But who are we to say? That's why I think they cut the sleeves off. <laughs> <laughs> two balls, two strikes to Justin Turner. One out, nobody on in the fourth. Giants and Diamondbacks in Arizona about ready to get underway about five minutes away. Up the middle. Echeverria can't get it. A one out single to center for Justin Turner. That ball on the outer half, it goes down the middle, and Justin Turner does exactly what you're supposed to do with that pitch. They throw it down the middle, take it back up the middle. Adrian Gonzalez coming up. He lined one off the base of the wall in right in his first at bat. Ozuna's quick work held him to a single. But Gonzalez. Was gunned down on a strike him out, throw him out, double play to end the second inning. Gonzalez had his career batting average 293. First round pick of the Marlins back in 2000. Turner has three stolen bases on the year and four tries. That's Xavier Scruggs, Southern California product, holding Turner on with JT from Bellflower. Nothing in two to Gonzalez. You know he's going to play at least 150 games a year. You know he's going to hit 25 to 30 home runs. He's going to knock in about 100, and he's going to hit near 300. And he's going to play Gold Glove, Gold Glove caliber first base. Got four of those on his mantelpiece. Nothing in two to Adrian Gonzalez. One and two. Tom Colder about to throw his 55th pitch. He scattered three hits, one out, one on here in the fourth. Mathis can't hang on. They can't teach that. Adrian Gonzalez riding an eight game hitting streak now nine with his single to right. Getting three and a quarter in his last 31 games but down on strikes. Third strikeout for Kohler second out of the fourth. Kohler has re two really good breaking pitches. I mean he's got that curveball which has a bigger break. Coming at you, and then that slider that you saw Adrian Gonzalez swinging a miss there because it's got a late break. It starts off looks like a fastball to the hitter, and then it just breaks, and the bottom falls out of it. Grandall, a strikeout victim in his first at bat. Very rarely do you see Adrian Gonzalez make a swing like that, so you know that spin on that ball right there with that slider is like an optical illusion to the hitter. And we've even seen it on the replay. You can see how late it just stayed on the path of the fastball and didn't. Even Usually, as a hitter, you kind of notice some of the trajectory and notice even some of the spin and anticipate where it's going to break. But that one 
it was just late 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 and then all of a sudden it was right near the plates when it decided to break. Grandall of course grew up in Miami after leaving Cuba played collegiately at the University of Miami. So he's home. And he grounds it slowly to second base. D. Gordon with the bare hand. Gets Grandall. That will end the inning. Meanwhile, Rich Hill has given up plenty of nothing for the first three. Top of the order for the Marlins when we come back. And it is Rich Hill. When is a curveball more than one pitch? Well, when you throw it at different angles and different speeds to different hitters in different situations. And he has done that since being a Dodger. And the innings look great, but especially zero in the earned runs. 15 innings pitched. And to think, when the blister shut him down when he was back in Oakland, he had five scoreless coming over here into Dodger Blue. And he has. Been perfect through the first three. He has struck out four. Top of the order for the Marlins as we head to the fourth. It'll be D. Gordon, Xavier Scruggs, and Martin Prato. Gordon popped to second in his first at bat. Takes a strike, it's nothing and one. Of course, D. Gordon suspended the early part of the year. And for D, this is his 61st game. Center field. Peterson's got a long way to go, but he will track it down. Ten in a row, retired by Hill. With a lot of help from Jock Peterson, second time tonight. Now here comes Scruggs. This is his 18th game of the big league, young big league career. And Hill has been in total command. from Poway High School. Ah! 
Born and Whittier. And behind, nothing and two. Fastball high. Scruggs, a 19th round pick of the Cardinals back in 2008. Now it's two and two. Played 26 games over bits of two seasons with the Cards. And signed a minor league free agent contract this past winter. So here he is with Justin Boringer. Peterson's got a long way to go again. Jock's been busy in center field. Two solid catches here in the fourth. Had a spectacular catch back in the second. One thing about Jock Peterson, he always gets a good first step, and that always sets him up to be able to make the catch right there, the look he has. But he got a good read on the one before off of D. Gordon's bat, and he had to go over his head on, on that one. Taking the angle over his right shoulder, good first step, opens up and get his body in a good position to make the catch. There is a strike, nothing in one to Martin Prado. Prado fifth in the league with 166 hits, and that 310 average is eighth best in the National League. One ball and one strike. Prado seven home runs, 66 runs batted in. Came up with the Braves. He was one of Bobby Cox's favorites. Last night, Oral, you made a good comparison. Very much like Howie Kendrick. They're both really studious baseball players that understand the game and where they are in the game and how to apply their skills. Jock Peterson getting a workout tonight. Three putouts in the fourth, 12 in a row, retired by Rich Hill. We're scoreless heading into the fifth. Eight years with the Dodgers organization, three as the hitting coach and five as the manager had this to say about the legendary Vince Scully's last year. Uh, I'm just really thankful that I got a chance to to be in L.A. for a few years with Vin. Uh, and I, I think I talked about it with someone the last time I was out there. 
just those little bus rides when we were going to San Francisco and he'd be behind me on the bus and just to kind of be able to just say, hey, you know, how'd you get started? And just be able to talk about his, you know, how he got started announcing and as a kid going to games and things like that. That's just something you can't get, you know. And uh, so to be a part of that felt, felt really good. Reddick leading off in the fifth. On the team bus, Don Matting, we would sit on the front row, right side. Vin would be in the second row, kind of leaning over, and they would always have a conversation. And Monday and I would be in the third and fourth rows back. And so Donnie and Vin had many a conversation about baseball and, and life. One ball and two strikes to Reddick. A strikeout victim in his first at bat. While Hill has been perfect through four, Josh Reddick struck out in his first at bat. Kohler has scattered three base hits. So we've got ourselves quite a pitcher's duel so far. Kohler, the big boy from the Bronx. Pitched collegiately at Stony Brook, which has put together a nice baseball program out on Long Island. They've Reddick had, in his first at bat, nine pitches. You, know, you mentioned Stony Brook. They've had some teams go to the Little League World oh. Series. So the youth program there is real good. Both you fellows have been to Williamsport and back. Here's the one two high and away two and two should be on everybody's baseball bucket list. If you are a huge baseball fan you need to do the Little League World Series and you definitely need to do the College oh, yeah. World Series. With Puig on deck the two two pitch to Reddick. Making life miserable for Colder. Didn't a few years back, Stony Brook also make it to the College World Series. Mm -hmm. I think they might have. Mm -hmm. Yep. Probably the same group of kids that came through <laughs> Williamsport. <laughs> we'll see them in the big league soon. Two balls and two strikes to Reddick, beginning the fifth. Now he has worked the count full. You do not know what's coming from this guy in a 3 2 count. Man on first, Justin Turner up there. Or Reddick was up there with Gonzalez on there through change ups and sliders. The center field, straight away, Yelich. The second nine pitch at bat for Reddick. Well, Saturday, the 24th, which would be two weeks from tonight, come on out to Dodger Stadium. 50,000 limited edition commemorative coins honoring Vin Scully. Presented by the Dodgers with a certificate. These solid bronze coins are individually numbered and minted with an image of Vin and his signature greeting quote. For more information, visit Dodgers.com slash L.A. Loves Vin. It's time for Dodger baseball. And Friday night, the 23rd, elaborate on field ceremonies honoring Vin. And big surprises in store on Friday night. We, one ball, one strike, bounced to short in his first at bat. Making his second big league start in left field tonight. Backhanded at third by Prado. You were talking earlier about Martin Prado, just a solid player all around, offensively and defensively. I mean, that was a rocket by Yasiel Puig. Just gloves it. He does a great job just gathering himself, understanding that it was hit so hard. Even with Yasiel's speed, he knows he has time to make a good throw. Two out, nobody on. Jock Peterson walked in his first at bat. Skies one to left, slicing, foul and out of play. 
Well, Peterson certainly was busy in the bottom of the fourth, recording all three putouts. He also robbed Marcelo Zuna of a base hit back in the second. Peterson's on base percentage impressive 344 as he took his 53rd walk of the season back in the third inning. We're scoreless in the fifth. Two and one. The Marlins have won all five games this year. Swept the Dodgers early in the season. Beat them four to one last night. Dodgers hitting under 200 against the Marlins this year. Well hit to right. Well, there goes the double shutout. A long distance home run for Jock Peterson. His 21st. And the Dodgers take a one to nothing lead. What a night Peterson is having. I tell you what, when you watch this replay and you want to know how far it is, up there underneath the Ford sign, there's a big number 448, and he's about five rows short of that. The camera can barely even get to where this ball is. It's above that camera. Sorry, Oro, I didn't mean to scare you, but I needed to brace myself at how far he hit that oh, ball. No. Wow. It's 400 and something. What the something is the only question. One, two, three, four rows from the 448. Five rows. Wow. So Hill's got the one nothing lead to work with. That is one and two. Oh, Jock took that same swing on the very first pitch that he fouled off the left field line, and that one he did not miss. Wow. Hill down on strikes, but he now has a one to nothing lead to work with. Thanks to Jock Peterson, who's having quite a night. Net LA is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Taste the all new Jack's Brewhouse Bacon Burger today at Jack in the Box. Limited time only at participating restaurants. Well, Rich Hill has been perfect through four. He has faced 12 batters. All 12 have seen, I'm sorry, nine of the 12 
have seen strike one. And Jock Peterson with a mammoth blast estimated at 418 feet. Who are we to argue? Dodgers with a one to nothing lead. And here is Yelich taking a strike, nothing in one. We we're talking earlier about the renaissance really in uh, the career of Rich Hill. Well there's Puig in left field. And that's the first out of the fifth inning. And we're talking he, he's very reminiscent of the career path of Jamie Moyer. Moyer first half of his career was just kind of a ham and egger and then he gets to Seattle and he becomes a great pitcher and mostly changing speeds and really relying on attacking hitters weaknesses an outstanding change up and really even though he didn't throw hard he learned to throw the high fastball in places where the hitters were tempted but really couldn't put the barrel on it but he was a late bloomer definitely and that's what Rich Hill has been since the age of 35. Had offers last year to be in big league bullpens, but said, no, I still can start. Took an offer to pitch AAA with Boston to be a starter. And finally got called up because the knuckleballer there in Boston suffered a concussion in a BP accident. Got four starts with Boston, did absolutely amazing in those four starts. Got a job with Oakland this year, pitched really well with Oakland. And Ended up having a little blister problem that turned into a major blister problem during the acquisition to the Dodgers here, but has continued to pitch really, really well. One of the best pitchers in baseball over the last year. On 0 and 2. That is strikeout number five. Really, the only pitcher that's been better than Rich Hill over the last year is Clayton Kershaw. He has done it a completely different style than Clayton. He's relied more on his curveball, and that makes that high fastball right there that he snuck by him more effective. He does it, does it in the air also. 55% of his outs are on fly balls, which we've seen one caught by Yasiel Puig this inning and three last inning in a row from to Jock Peterson. Strike to Jeff Francoeur, who popped a second in his first at bat. Jamie Moyer first time he won 20 games was at the ripe old age of 38. That's what I love about Rich Hill. He gets a strike there but he's not happy with it because he knows he missed his spot. Great the execution not the results. High and inside to Jeff Francoeur. Peterson home run the difference in the game. We're in the bottom half of the fifth. Now it's two and two. You talk line drive percentage against Rich Hill is number one in the big leagues. Only 6.6 percent of the balls hit off him are line drives. Major League average is 21 percent. Hmm. And that leads you to the other thing that he's best in the big leagues at. The well hit average off of him is point zero seven nine. What does that mean? They graded well hit. I would say it's on exit velocity probably and it's probably under a certain number. And he is the lowest in the big leagues as far as the ball leaving the bat with the weakest contact contact. So he's full on the hitters. Yep, he's when they put it in play, they put it in play the softest of anybody. Well, tonight there's only been one hard hit ball against him, and that was Ozuna, and a terrific catch by Peterson. That was back in the second. 
Three balls and two strikes. Breaking ball gets him. Strikeout number six. 15 up, 15 down. Rich Hill still has not given up a run as a Dodger. Baseball brought to you by T-Mobile in Arizona tonight in the second inning. That's Joe Panic, double off the wall in left center, and Hunter Pence scoring the first run of the game. We'll keep you updated throughout the night. Of course, the Dodgers lead the Giants by four, and after tonight, just 21 games remaining. Roberts and his club. Top of the order, Howie Kendrick beginning the sixth inning. We've got some drama building here in Florida tonight. Kendrick lined to right and bounced to first. Peterson's home run and Hill perfect through five. Kendrick Seeger and Turner to bat for the Dodgers. Here in the six against Tom Kohler. Two balls, no strikes. Kendrick on the year has eight home runs, 35 runs batted in, and he leads the Dodgers in stolen bases with nine. Starting at second base tonight, Utley the night off. Had a four pitch walk to begin the sixth. Second walk given up by Colder. The Dodger offense here can't sit back and be a spectator. Of what's going on the mound with Rich Hill? They got to get him some insurance runs here early. Take advantage of opportunities. Back in the second, they were able to get the lead off batter on base with Adrian Gonzalez when he got that single to right field, but unable to even get him to second. Kohler has struck out four, walk two. That one is well hit. It's on its way, and it is gone. A home hey. run. Ready. Corey Seager, his 25th of the year, and the Dodgers take a three to nothing lead. We've been talking about how great Corey Seager's season has been, what he does at the plate, on the field, off the field, how he handles himself. And now we know he listens because we were talking about how to help me Rich Hill. What does he do? He hits a two-run bomb coming up big <laughs> right there with his 25th home run. Just what the Dodgers needed. 
Now he's only a double away from the first rookie to hit 25 home runs and hit 40 doubles. Last one to do that was Albert Pujols. So quickly, Juan Nieves going out to try to settle the rattled nerves of Tom Kohler. Now it's time for the top tier play brought to you by Arco. And it was this shot. That was a slider that didn't have a whole lot to it. On the inner half and up, and Corey Seeger planted it right where he wanted to. Kept it fair. So the leadoff walk, then the two run home run for Seeger. Here's Turner swinging and missing, and it's one ball, one strike. Turner one for two. The lefty Mike Dunn going to work in the Marlin bullpen. Dodgers who had scored only nine runs. There's a fly ball. That one's well hit. That one's got a chance and that one is gone. Turner goes back to back with Seeger. For Turner, his 26th home run of the year. Third home run of the night for the Dodgers, who now lead 4 0. Talked about how impressive the home run by Corey Seegers was. Well, this one's impressive too by Justin Turner. Showing off the power to the opposite field, taking the fastball the other way and just driving it. When he hit it, he knew it right off the bat that it was going out and caring for him. Don Mattingly coming out, and he's going to take Tom Kohler back with him. Turner is hot. The Dodgers are hot. And they've got a four to nothing lead. Still nobody out here in the sixth inning on a night when Peterson goes deep and Seeger and Turner go back to back. Practice 26th home run of the year after Corey Seeger hit his 25th. And back in the fifth inning, Jock Peterson hit his 21st. So it's Mike Dunn to the rescue for Don Mattingly in his 41st appearance, 2.6 ERA. And he'll be facing Adrian Gonzalez as Monty Grandal and Josh Reddick. Dodgers couldn't hit the Marlins at all the first five games. Of the season, but tonight a little retribution. Yeah, Jose Fernandez pitched great last night. Dodgers struck out an awful lot, 14 against Fernandez. I think 17 total yesterday, mm -hmm. but today they are making some contact, and it is loud. Dodgers were struck out 17 times last night and 12 times on Wednesday.
So Kohler's night is done. Battered and bruised, and here's Adrian Gonzalez, one for two. One ball, no strikes to Adrian Gonzalez. Single to right in his first at bat. Close to being a double, but a perfect carom. Marcel Ozuna was able to contain the damage, keep Adrian at first. Dodgers have been wearing out their right field corner. Jock Peterson, Justin Turner, Corey Seeger, Adrian Gonzalez came up a little short. And Peterson went really long. <laughs> well, it's just smart hitting. I mean, you look in the outfield, you're like, this is a big ballpark. You're going, where's the shortest part of the field? Well, it's right field, so let's attack there. They've been peppering it. One and two to Gonzalez. The Traveria perfectly positioned. First out of the sixth. Grand Dahl coming up. Grandal is 0 for 2. Yasmani has a higher batting average as a right handed batter, but more power. From the left side. Only three home runs as a right handed hitter, Grandal. Playing where he grew up, Miami, after leaving Cuba. Graduated high school here and went to the University of Miami. Three in here in the sixth. The four pitch walk to Howie Kendrick would open the door. Seeger is 25th home run and then Turner following him it is 26th. Brandall is down Dodger fans you know a standout high school senior athlete then nominate them for a chance to be named a Time Warner Cable Sports Championship Drive Scholar Athlete. And receive a $2,500 college scholarship. Go to TWCSChamp.com now for more information. The so Grand Doll is down. Corey Seeger. Now 25 home runs and 68 runs batted in. Coming into this game, the Dodgers in the second half were number one in baseball, hitting off of right hand pitchers. Home runs, one every 18 at bats. Got a little better tonight. Dodgers on the season now have 172 home runs. In the left, Frank Cora is there, and that's going to do it. The top of the six, written by Corey Seeger. A two run shot, followed by Justin Turner. Turner's 26th of the year. Four nothing Dodgers.
Ticket LA is brought to you by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop online at choosenissan.com. And by Children's Hospital Los Angeles. We treat kids better. Rich Hill has been perfectly good through the first five innings and in 17 innings with the Dodgers has yet to give up a run 17 strikeouts and two walks. Jeff Mathis leading it off tonight six strikeouts no walks. It's the fourth time in his career. He's taken a no hitter into the sixth inning including his last start. One ball and one strike to Mathis. Echeverria on deck and Tom Kohler to follow. Mathis, a strikeout victim in his first at bat. That hurts. They hit the bat twice and the toe once. And it missed the umpire? <laughs> That's true. Brian Knight KO'd last night and Tony Randazzo took a deflection tonight. Well, he's wearing that protective gear on it his always, left foot. It always misses that. Yeah, by that much. <laughs> I mean, he's full metal jacket on that left foot. He's got it on the shin and the top of the foot. Step. Yeah. Wow. And it missed it. It still missed it. Two balls and two strikes. Yeah, you know, we're talking Rich Hill and reinventing himself and becoming more of a curveball pitcher, not relying on his fastball, changing speeds, changing arm angles. The other thing he changed was he changed where he stands on the rubber. He is to the far third base side now, just with a toe on the rubber, where he used to be on the other side. Now that makes his curveball look like a strike, end up a ball, and makes his fastball more in the strike zone the whole time, too. Strike three call. Three strikeouts in a row for Hill. Seven on the game. 16 in a row retired. He'll take the strikeout. He doesn't like the execution at all. He dropped his head when this ball was called a strike. Yasmani Grandal sitting low and away. Rich Hill throws it up right down the middle. Shook his head, but getting right back on there, committing to the next pitch. Echeverria, strikeout victim in his first at bat. Up and in. Giancarlo Stanton will pinch hit for Mike Dunn. He's on deck. A ball and a strike to Adani Echevarria. Right of Notre Dame High School. Another fellow who grew up a Dodger fan. But he has been reduced essentially to a pinch hitter because of the badly strained groin muscle. One ball, two strikes. One and two, it feels like Hill has been ahead of the hitters all night. Just inside. Two balls, two strikes.
Hill is so energetic after he releases a pitch. He's jumping and moving around. He's got a big exhaust. He gets that back leg coming through so he can really fire his hips. Foul ball. He's topping out 91 92 with the fastball. He's changing speeds going down to about 73 with the curveball. Then he's changing the arm angles. Hit different locations. And wearing out the low breaking pitch here and the low and away fastball. Might want to elevate a little bit and change the eye line. Call strike three. Eight strikeouts for Hill. Four in a row. He's retired 17 straight. I mean, that was just a perfect pitch right there. You saw Yasmani Grandal go on the inside. Last couple of pitches, they went away, they went away, they Echeverria sights were away knowing that's where they're trying to get him they don't want to come in on him and he's probably thinking if they do it's just going to get me off the plate to go back away and that one he paints the corner struck out the last four guys in a row but you got Stanton coming up there right now and Yasmani pulls out the little scouting report out of his pocket shows it to Rich Hill and says this is what we're going to go with big fella just to make sure everybody's on the same page Rick Honeycutt is going to go out and have a chat. It's not Stanton it's not stepping Stanton. in. Yeah. Mattingly changed it up. We wanted Stanton to hit in case somebody was on. They're going to save his big bat if they ever set the table. He definitely could clear the table. Robert Andino. Two out, nobody on in the sixth. Dodgers with a four nothing lead. Here's a call strike, nothing in one. Only two three ball counts all night for Rich Hill. Dino spent most of the year at AAA New Orleans, 267. In his career, he's been up and down. One ball, one strike, two out. Here's a strike. He's gone breaking ball away. Breaking ball in and now breaking ball away has not shown him anything straight. On one and two. Fastball strike three swinging. He strikes out the side. He has struck out five in a row and retired 18 in a row. Something doing here in Miami.
look at the 76 Dodgers calendar. We'll be back with you tomorrow morning. First thing, Keta Baeta and Jose Arena. Then it's on to New York. There's a matinee there Wednesday. Kershaw will be making his second start back. And then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, the Dodgers will be in Arizona, return home, and they will be facing the Giants, who have a 3 0 lead in Phoenix tonight. The story at the moment is Hill. Rich Hill has been perfect through the first six innings. He has struck out the last five batters in succession. Nine on the night. As Puig leads it off in the seventh inning against Brian Ellington the third Marlin pitcher of the evening. Fastball at ninety nine. His 23rd appearance. You can cut the walk number down. Then you're really talking. Four nothing Dodgers. That got up there in a hurry, and Puig is down. That's baseball this these days. Go to the bullpen and get bring a guy in, bring throwing a hundred. When you're and down four nothing. <laughs> right? I mean it's because you know why? Because there's another guy who throws a hundred too. <laughs> Tonight has been power and perfection for the Dodgers. There's a familiar face. Activated today, Andre Ethia. Peterson, a 418 foot home run in his last at bat. Three home runs for the Dodgers tonight. And that's ripped to right field. Well hit and gone. A home run. A line drive rocket down the right field line. Peterson's second home run of the night. The fourth for the Dodgers. They lead it five to nothing. Well, we've seen Jock Peterson do it on the field, making some great catches. We saw his last at bat where he hit a monster home run. And then he listened to us and say it's only 335. The last one was 418. I don't have to hit it that far. I'll just hit this one on the line and makes it over the wall. And now Rich Hill. So Peterson with 22 home runs on the year. Fourth time he's had at least two in a game. No balls and two strikes to Hill. Before Rich Hill came up to the plate, he and Dave Roberts had a long chat. And I'm sure it was about how he feels, what's the finger look like, where the <laughs> blister used to be. Something that Dave Roberts had to go through with Ross Stripling's first outing. And he had something special brewing. Up in San Francisco, feels like 10 years ago. Rich Hill has gone past 100 pitches an awful lot this year when he was with Oakland. Only 75 so far. But it's about present and it's about future of this season. When you're talking about his health and deciding to push him onward in this game. No balls and two strikes to Hill. The last thing that Dodgers need is for him to develop another hot spot as hot as he's been pitching. And then all of a sudden have to miss a start because they pushed him a little too far. He's back on April the 8th. Stripling had the no hitter into the eighth inning in San Francisco. The fifth game of the year. And tonight, the 140th.
One ball, two strikes. A five nothing Dodger lead. Ball strike three. That'll bring up Howie Kendrick. That guy right next to Jock Peterson knows what Rich Hill's going through right now. I'll tell you what, as a pitcher, when there's three innings left of anything, you feel like it can be done. Well, just watching it, you can feel the butterflies. Kendrick 0 for 2, a walk and a run scored tonight. Lines it foul. Seeger on deck. Two out, top of the seven. Well hit to right toward the corner. And Ozuna is there. And that will end the inning. We're at the seventh inning stretch. And the story is building through six. Rich Hill has been perfect. Chill has been perfect through six. He has struck out nine. He has struck out the last five batters in a row. And he's yet to give up a run as a Dodger. What a remarkable run. He starts off Gordon with a breaking ball. One ball, no strikes. Gordon, Scruggs, and Prado to bat. Fastball in the outside corner, and it's one and one. Five nothing. The Dodgers have seven hits. Puig is there and left. First out of the seventh.
Hill just at 78 pitches with one out of the seven. Scruggs is struck out, fly to center, and he fouls it back. It's nothing and one. When, as a pitcher, how late into a game does it start to get inside your head? After the fifth inning. As, as the game starts to shorten to get closer to your goal, you really know that there have been multiple times in your past that you have gone four innings and pitched really well lights out three innings and pitched really well lights out two innings so you start to get to a point where you actually have past experiences to draw from when something's happening in the first and the second and the third even the fourth you like there's just it's too far it's too long you're just worried about winning the game Grant Dayton warming in the Dodger pen. Two balls and a strike. Well, perhaps that was what uh, Roberts was talking to uh, Hill about. Strike on the outside corner. Two and two. It's not easy to be a big league manager, and it's not easy to do what Rich Hill is doing tonight. But the combination of both right now, Rich Hill is putting Dave Roberts and Rick Honeycutt in a bind and this is the time of year when personal goals cannot get in the way of team goals Giants five to nothing in Arizona after two and a half here's a three two just the third three ball count tonight. Most relieved person in the ballpark if something happens to Rich Hill out here that records a blemish could be Dave Roberts. To third base. Turner picks it up and throws him out. 20 in a row retired by Rich Hill. And here's Martin Prado. You talk about the pitcher, and when he starts feeling like Oral just touched on, you as a position player start feeling it too and understand and know what's going on. And think about everything that's put in play. The Dodgers have made 63 errors this year. That's the fewest of any of the 30 teams in Major League Baseball. The Astros over in the American League. Have made 65 errors. That's the fewest in the AL. One ball, one strike to Martin Prado, who has flied to right and flied to center. One ball, one strike, two out. Strike on the inside corner. One and two. Shows you the confidence that he has to cha change arm angles. He's got a five nothing lead with an individual goal set in front of him, and he'll throw it from anywhere. One and two to Prado, eighth leading hitter in the league. Long run for Puig. And he makes a spectacular catch. The perfect game remains intact. Puig, just his second start in left field as a Dodger, saves the day.
of the year. You just saw it with a perfect game riding on it. Puig trots it down and Prado robbed of a hit. And Rich Hill is still perfect. Well, I think we've seen Yasiel have the throw of the year over mm -hmm. there in Colorado when he threw that all the way. Trevor Story out at third base, and now the catch. What a tremendous catch. For me, I've seen Yasiel make plays here at this stadium. One he didn't make that I think was just unbelievable effort, and then one here that he does make to save the perfect game. But you remember in right field when he sacrificed the body here in a tie ball game and ran into the pole in right field and the wall and didn't come up with it but it was one of the most amazing efforts that I've ever seen. Meanwhile new pitcher for the Marlins is Hunter Cervenka. There is something special happening here tonight. In Miami. Seeger takes outside. To Addo. Joe Blanton is warming up in the bullpen. <laughs> That's drilled to right and just foul. Dodgers have hit four home runs. Rich Hill has been letter perfect. As we head to the eighth. <laughs> Seeger with Turner and Gonzalez to follow. That one is drilled to center field, but there is Yelich to track it down. Well, celebrate the legendary voice of the Dodgers. Vin Scully weekend beginning Friday night, September the 23rd through Sunday afternoon, the 25th. Highlights include Friday's pregame ceremony featuring special guests and Saturday's limited edition commemorative coin giveaway. For tickets, visit Dodgers.com slash L.A. Loves Vin. Now Justin Turner. Two for three and a home run tonight. One ball, no strikes. JT. It was his 26th home run. He's got 79 runs batted in. That catch by Twig was utterly breathtaking. Takes strike, it's three and one. With a perfect game going, the Dodgers have bullpen activity. At a ground ball to short, Echeverria throws out Turner. Talk about a dilemma for a manager. It really is and I think Dave Roberts will err on the side of being conservative. I'm not sure he will push Rich Hill. We've seen the activity in the bullpen of Grant Dayton last inning Joe Blanton up now. That tells you where his mind is at. You throw into the mix as well that blister issue. I don't think if he had the blister issue there would be any decision. I think he'd let him go. Uh, Rich Hill has gone as high as 112 pitches this year and he's not even close to that. But I think that knowing that hot spot and how long it took to feel to heal. Gonzalez goes around one and one. Rich Hill just ducked into the clubhouse and I'm sure he's trying to avoid Rick Honeycutt and Dave Roberts. They can't tell you no mas if you're not around them. <laughs> a 
Gonzalez goes around and it's one and two. Here's your story. The king of the hill. And tonight it's been nothing but royalty. One and two. That's Just there. inside. He took his jacket off and I'm not sure you do that if you're still in the game. Meanwhile, Honey cuts on the phone. Oh. Got his glove. Just more drama building. That's why we do what we do. Players play. Fans watch. Love the action. As the moments become increasingly dramatic. Right All strike three. That ends the inning. Dave Roberts, Rich Hill, Rick Honeycutt. What to do? What to do? We'll find out. Well, I think we know. Talked about managerial decisions of the year. Dave Roberts is taking Rich Hill out of the game. Perfect through seven, 89 pitches, 62 for strikes, struck out nine. And Joe Blanton is coming in. Well, former players, start with you, Oral. What do you think? I'm going to talk as a pitcher, not as a broadcaster. <laughs> And not as a manager. You, Nomar, you can talk as the manager. <laughs> I want the ball. I want to go back out there. I can't believe that just happened to me. I got a chance, once in a lifetime chance to throw a perfect game in the big leagues, and I'm six outs away. I only have 89 pitches, and all this hurts. And as the manager, he's thinking, where do, where's our ultimate goal this year? What is the ultimate goal? The ultimate goal is to win a World Series. And you're thinking we are the team that have 28 different guys on the disabled list. I just got a pitcher, a finally a one two punch. I even got my ace who threw yesterday and the guy who could be that one two punch to carry us down the season. Rich Hill who's been dealing with blister issues all year even when they got him. 
Joe Blanton not in relief. And so now you're going, okay, we're going down the stretch. What a tremendous performance, but I have to make a decision right now. What's that big picture? I cannot afford to lose Rich Hill as well as he's pitching in this Dodger uniform down the stretch. Because if that blister flares up, then you're going, okay, to go for this one game, was it worth the rest of the season and possibly the championship? And I agree completely with you. I was just saying what the manager's thinking. <laughs> <laughs> now what are you thinking? I, I, I wanted to go. So I wanted to see him go out there one more time. And I know, you know, if I'm playing behind him, you just saw the effort that Yasiel made to save that perfect game. The effort to, to do that. You as a as a as a teammate are going, we're going to do this for him and pull him, you know, pull him through. I mean, here's the play by Yasiel once again as we look at this. So that you have all the adrenaline as well with the pitcher. You're feeling it as a position player. So you're you want to see at least see him give it up. And a ground ball to short. Seeger throws out Ozuna. There's two out. It'll be quite a team accomplishment right here if they can finish off the perfecto completely together with the help of the bullpen and Joe Blanton. With the unbelievable effort by Rich Hill and those eight guys also on the field with the pitcher have to be perfect too. The X factor is the blister. And we are now after tonight down to 21 games. Hill the competitor. Obviously not pleased but there he is in the dugout. Next to another pretty good lefty. And right now he's got to take the emotions and the frustrations and he's got to suck it up for the team and keep his mouth shut and finish the game. That's the attitude right there. Cheering for your teammate out there on the mound because there's nothing you can do about it now. Two years ago, even a year ago, could you imagine where Rich Hill would be tonight? Could he? He's a 37 game winner in his career at the age of 36. Broke into the big leagues in 2005 on his eighth major league organization. No, you're right. You, you, all of those factors is probably what's playing into the emotion sure. for him because right now he's going, yeah, all of that. And here I was on the verge or I had at least a chance. But at the same time, let's not forget. Remember when he was about to pitch for the Dodgers and then there was something brewing underneath the blister again there was a hot spot so they had to s slow him down took about another week week and a half until he was ready and the Dodgers had to slow down they're like and Dave Roberts was always answering those questions about well it's just not there there's something that we're worried about we need to calm that down before we throw him out there. Now the 2 2 to Frank Coor. He can get sympathy and empathy from Clayton. Because <laughs> if there's a guy who doesn't want to come out of a game, it's the guy to Rich Hill's right. Well, we have seen combined no hitters before. I don't believe there's ever been a combined perfect game before. What a night. Blanton on two and two to Frank Coor. Line drive off the glove of Seeger. There goes the perfect game and a no hitter. We talk about Frenchy all the time being a big time clutch player. He finds a way to get this one to touch outfield grass. Corey Seeger gives it everything he can. Just not enough ups. That, that's a tough one. That's a tough one as an infielder, as a position player, because they're going, listen, that hit my glove. And you always feel if it hit my glove, I should have had it. That's your that's how you feel, and you know what's at stake, and you're going, oh. Now Justin Bohr pinch hitting from Mathis. That was a hard one to time because it wasn't hit like the trajectory. It, it had a little hump in it, and it also didn't have much velocity.
Rich Hill. What a night. And again, the, the trajectory of his career to this point. He was perfect through seven innings tonight, struck out nine, and just 88 pitches. But the fickle finger of fate, the fear of the blister. Dodgers with a five to nothing lead. And four. No balls, two strikes. I'm guessing talk shows around the country will have plenty to talk about. I think you're right. Talk radio is going to light up. <laughs> this is an early Christmas, a Christmas gift. Hmm. Well, everybody talked about Dave Roberts after the Ross Stripling game. And guess where the Dodgers are now? After all that controversy about Ross Stripling, he's had a healthy year, contributed in a big way. And the Dodgers are in first place by four games. Well, one thing also, another thing about the rookie manager Roberts, he's not afraid to make a hard decision. He's not. He has not backed down from anything. And Bob Guerin has managed in the big leagues. He's right there in his ear. I'm sure talking him through it. And they are concentrating on this game, but there's another subject they're talking about too. So there are what 21 games after this. Brandall will throw out. Four and that'll end the inning. We go to the ninth. See a Southern California BMW Center today for exceptional offers or visit SoCalBMW.com. How many divergent storylines have we seen tonight? Beginning, of course, with Rich Hill. The perfect game. And he's taken out. Dodgers hit four home runs. And Dave Roberts. You think he might get a question or two after the game? Yep. And I think what he needs to think is we have a first place team. And by that time, hopefully, the Dodgers have won. So I have a winning ball club tonight. And I have a healthy starting pitcher to be right along Clayton Kershaw as I bring him along. And I got Kenta Maeda going tomorrow. And all of a sudden, there's a formation of a big three starting to emerge. Which three or four weeks ago simply didn't exist. 
He has no Scott Casimir. He has no Brandon McCarthy. He has no Alex Wood. He has no Brett Anderson. <laughs> He's got three innings out of Clayton Kershaw in the last two months. He's building him up. He's got a guy that was throwing a perfect game that hasn't given up a run as a Dodger but has an issue with a finger that could creep back up. He's got a guy that they brought over from Japan that's having a great year but is better on long rest than short rest. And he's got two kids De Leon and Urias going to pitch against the Yankees in New York. And he's got to finish off a season and keep the Giants in the rearview mirror. He made the conservative and the team choice. Giants by the way have a five to nothing lead in the fifth inning in Arizona tonight. Dodger lead is four and after tonight 21 games remain. And six games head to head with the Giants. <laughs> you think it's easy to manage a ball club. Well, you normally have 25 of the most competitive people in the world on your team with you here in September you've got a few more than that. Randall on two and two to center field. And competitive people don't always breed logical decisions. <laughs> and that's what the manager and the coaching staff is for to sometimes protect the players from themselves and do the ultimate right thing for the whole package not for the individual. It's very, very hot, much a hot seat. The hot seat with a hot spot on a finger that's got a blister. And a perfect game on the line. Reddick is out, two gone. Watch the drive to the pennant with MLB.TV Premium. Watch every out of market game live in HD on more than 400 supported devices and enjoy a free subscription to at bat premium the number one app for live baseball blackout and other restrictions apply visit MLB TV. And here is Yasiel Pui who made that spectacular catch that would turn out to be the last pitch thrown by Hill. You know, managing is managing the game, managing the bullpen, making decisions on who's going to hit, who's going to still pitch. But that's managing right there. The small conversations away from the game to keep your club all on the same page. Dave Roberts had a little conversation with Rick, with Rick Honeycutt. He also turned and said something to Clayton Kershaw. Now he's talking to Adrian Gonzalez. You've got to keep everybody on the same page, know what direction we're headed and why we're headed there. And that's how you keep the locker room and the manager's office and the coaching staff all together. It's still a tough call. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> You're talking about a perfect game. I know. Mm -hmm. Quig takes a four pitch walk. Meanwhile, the new Marlin pitcher is Dustin McGowan. And Jock Peterson's had quite a night. A couple of home runs and a walk. And a spectacular catch. And look who's coming to dinner. Andre Ethier hoping that Peterson keep keep the inning alive. This is a game just chock filled with stories.
This is McGowan's 48th appearance of the year, an ERA of an even three. Peterson with two home runs tonight, 22 on the season. Lost in all of this, the Dodgers have a five to nothing lead. And in the first five games of the series between these two clubs, they've scored a total of nine runs. You have five tonight on seven hits. Three and zero to Peterson. Three and one. Series wraps up tomorrow morning. Here's a line drive base hit in the right. Quig will hold at second base. So Jock Peterson is three for three, two home runs and a walk. Jock would have had a shot at the player of the game, but uh, this guy named Rich Hill got in the way. But he's put three unbelievable swings on the baseball tonight two home runs and that base hit. It's a perfect night for him the other at bat it was walked. So here's Andre Ethier to pinch hit but before he does. Pitching coach Juan Nieves going out to talk. With McGowan. My dinner with Andre. He fouled one off his shin in spring training, and nobody had any idea it would be as severe as it turned out to be. And it's been a long road back. So here's Andre. In 11 rehab games at Rancho, he was 13 for 41. A home run, four RBIs. It's been a long time coming. Weig leads from second. One ball and one strike. Ethier a year ago, 294. 14 home runs, 53 RBIs, and he was having a great spring until he fouled it off his shin. Here he is. Two balls and a strike. As if we needed yet another storyline for this game. The return of Ethier. Two and one from McGowan. The first. That'll end the inning. We head to the bottom half of the ninth. Dodgers 5-0.
Texas player of the game. Rich Hill pitched the game of his life. Perfect through seven innings. He struck out nine. 88 pitches, 61 for strikes. And according to our friends at Stats Inc., that saved the perfect game to that point and also be the last pitch that Hill would throw. Dating back to 1913, no pitcher had ever been pulled from a game with at least seven innings of perfect ball throw. Never before. Now Grant Dayton will be pitching in the bottom of the ninth. Now trying to preserve the shutout. What a game, what a night, what a story. And a Danny Echeverria facing Grant Dayton as we begin the ninth inning. Bottom half. Dayton has been a pleasant surprise to say the least. This is his 17th appearance. He's got a 183 ERA. And he starts at Javaria with a strike, a breaking ball. So it was an historic move made by Dave Roberts. And quickly, Dayton's ahead, nothing in two. Grant Dayton has pitched his way to the big leagues. That's been a long time coming and he's getting real close I'm sure to pitching his way onto a playoff roster. If you look at the leverage situations that Dave Roberts and Rick Honeycutt put him in now. He has become one of the guys that they go to with a lead. Not big. Sometimes small sometimes tie games from this really the seventh inning on. Nothing in two. He has not backed down from any situation he'd been put in. Bases loaded, no out, got out of a jam about a month or so ago. And when they watch his execution of where the target is and then where the ball ends up, it is usually in the right place. Right and out of play. This is a game that's going to be remembered for a very long time. Now the feeling that I have is is almost like somebody skipped a holiday. Like you're you're waiting for a holiday and it was about it was going to be tomorrow and then all of a sudden uh, we just kind of skipped over it. <laughs> we yeah. missed it. Yeah, it's know? back to school. A little bit of a pit, pit in your stomach, <laughs> like, oh, we had an opportunity, and oh man, we didn't. I'm just thinking about the 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 emotions this game brings over a course of a season. Now you always hear players that how they try to stay even keel throughout the entire season because it can get to you. And I'm just thinking how as recently as a. The last road trip when the Dodgers were in Colorado. You know, they were on the verge of being swept in the excitement with Toll's grand slam to give them the lead. They were you're riding high as if you forget that you lost the series. It didn't feel that way. Yeah. Well, here, on the verge of winning this game, is it going to feel that way? You know, the team bus after a loss there's this thing in the big leagues called mourning the loss mm -hmm. where everybody's quiet. There's no loud conversations. Nobody takes phone calls. You text maybe you whisper. Backhanded by Turner. Throw is wide. Oh, that was an unbelievable play by Justin Turner because the last hop took a funny hop. It was it went back into his body. So he had his glove out ready to field it because it was going to be a backhand and then when it hit the dirt for the final hop he has to adjust watch this last one right here Oh, as he's going it comes back into him and he makes the play and then just can't get the throw on line. Oh. And there was nothing that Adrian Gonzalez could do. 
get off the bag and limit the damage. Destin Hood is pinch hitting here. Dodgers five to nothing. On a night in which Rich Hill was perfect. Hill in 19 innings since coming to the Dodgers has struck out 20 and walked two. And just to finish up the thought on the feeling in the locker room and on the team bus tonight, I think it's going to be a celebration of the win, but a mourning of the loss of the opportunity to get the perfecto. And I think both are, you are honoring both sides of the equation. I think you have to honor Rich Hill's effort and his willingness to go back out there and say, I would love to go for it. And I think you have to honor the fact that Dave Roberts made a tough decision in a winning cause. And oftentimes managers have to protect their players from themselves. Yeah, they sure do. And Dave Roberts managing skills that he has developed this year in his first year will serve him well in the next 24 hours to 48 hours as he has the conversations with all the different guys in the organization on the team to keep them all on the same page. Not and to mention the fourth estate. That's a big part of it too. Well, he has handled the media very very well this year. And all the different situations he's been put into. He's been very honest with everybody. But no manager in history has been faced with the decision that he had to make tonight in history. Taking a pitcher out with a perfect game. In seven innings or beyond. History. I'm not sure there's ever been a pitcher in history that's been out for a month and a half with a blister. Yeah. <laughs> That, so I say before the, the divergent storyline surrounding this game. Hood is down and that's the first out of the bottom of the night. I feel for both sides of the equation. I feel for Rich Hill not getting the opportunity and having that taken away from him. And I feel for Dave Roberts being put in the situation of having to make the decision to protect the team and the long term opportunities of this Dodger team in 2016. It's a question of battle and war. It was a years ago, wasn't it? Uh, Terry Collins stayed with Pedro Martinez with a no hitter. Johan Santana. Johan Santana, sorry. Johan yep. Santana. Yeah. And that uh, he stayed essentially too long. Yeah. And that was the beginning of the end of Santana's career. Mm. It ain't easy. You ask every manager in baseball right now, they would not have envied his spot. No. <laughs> they would not. They they know they feel everything that. Dave Roberts was going through the decision that he had to make. Talking with Bob Guerin and Rick Honeycutt. I'll tell you what, you pre-play, you pre-play your your comments to the media, and you can bounce them off your coaching staff and they give you the feedback. Well, think about this angle, think about here, and you might get a, you might get attacked on that this way. But, uh, it's part of it. Well, you're not just talking to the media. You're talking to the fans. Exactly. You're talking to everybody. Here's the one two. And he's got a very good foundational piece and that is I was thinking of our future. And his job is to have the name on the front of the jersey win the championship not the name on the back of the jersey accomplish something for an individual. This is going to be trouble. Not going to get Gordon. First and second one out. 
This is why we love this game so much. It was played at this caliber. It's late into the season. So much riding above and beyond the professional, the personal interactions. <laughs> so Gordon is aboard. The Marlins have first and second, one out. And Xavier Scruggs. Oh for three. One ball and no strikes. An error and an infield hit. And Kenley Jansen just in case. Kenley just kind of waved off throwing anymore so he's hot enough and he's just going to become a spectator until he's either needed or the game's over. Swing and a miss. One ball one strike. Alana Rizzo has the best seat in the house. She's right next to the dugout. She's practically in the dugout. He's dropping a little bit. <laughs> Charlie, I tell you what, if you look over into the dugout or you certainly try to listen into the dugout, it is almost as if this team is losing the game five to nothing versus winning the game five to nothing. There's not one person on the back bench. Everyone's up at the top step, but they're not talking to one another. They're just kind of looking at to see what's going on, hoping that this game ends. Seems like they lost versus the fact that they're going to win this game. A very different uh, change of emotions in this dugout, obviously, considering what happened in this game. Right, right along what I was talking yeah. about, right? When I was saying, huh, when you back in Colorado, you get that one, it feels like you won that series, and they just saved from the sweep of that series. And then here, this is a big win. Sparks is down on strikes. There's two out. We were just talking about that before the game. How big? Oral touched on it. This is a big game. Going okay. You haven't beaten the Marlins yet this year. You lost them five in a row. You want to have you want to win this series and then you're going to be going into Yankee Stadium. Some rookies on the hill. And Clayton Kershaw on the back end and then going to Arizona for four your longest road trip of the year so. And with two out and two on and a right handed hitter Martin Prado coming up. In comes Kenley Jansen to try to seal the deal. Out away from the 80th of the season, Dodgers will go a season high 19 games over 500 again. So he is bringing in Kenley Jansen to try to do away with Martin Prado, and the Dodgers can walk away with the victory. But this is a story that's going to be talked about for a long time. 
Prado 0 for 3. Prado was the one who lined it to left field. The last pitch of 88 thrown by Rich Hill tonight. And Puig made one of the great catches of the season to preserve the perfect game at that point. But then in the eighth, Roberts called on Blanton. Blanton gave up a base hit that just tipped off the glove of a leaping Corey Seeger. Turner has it. And that is going to do it. All needed was one point.